Well, hello, hello, and welcome to Melissa's Crafting Treehouse. If this is your first time here, I'm so glad you're joining in. Um, if you're a veteran, you've been around over a while, welcome back, so glad you're here. So I have really three sort of general segments for today's uh, crafting session. I wanna share with you uh, the finished cards that I made from last week, which I only finished a bunch of focal pieces, so I wanted to show you the finished cards, some super quick Christmas cards. Um, and I have a project demonstration, a very cute little project that I'm excited to share and has lots of little pieces and parts. So it'll be fun, fun to show you all the stuff. Um, and then I also am going to show you at the end of today's uh, video, some past projects from uh, my uh, Makers Mojo Creative Escape event, which is coming up soon. So I want you to have an idea of kind of what that's all about and um, why it's such an amazing event and why you should sign up. So those three things. Okay, so, um, and uh, welcome everybody. My website is on the uh, bottom of the screen. If you uh, wanna go and check out other things that I share, that's there. Um, and this is the current host code. And I'm just gonna flash it for just one second. Um, and that's, and then I'm gonna go back to um, my web address so you can find it. You can find the host code always on my website as well. All right, so let me just go back to comments where I can see, hello people joining in. Hello, Jolaine, hi Donna. So glad to, to see you here. And Donna, so wonderful to meet you in person. <laughs> that was so fun. I love being able to put um, a face uh, to a name uh, on the screen. So very fun. Uh, so glad you made it down here to my studio. Hi, Polly. So glad to see you as well. Yay. Good to see people joining in. All right. So um, I am going to start with the projects that I made last week, but I didn't finish. I just did focal pieces. I'm going to bring my screen over here and just show you that. So look at all this wonderful funness, right? I did mostly the focal pieces um, during the event uh, last week. So I just thought I really wanted to show you them finished. Now, these were super quick and easy. Um, you'll have to watch last week's video for all the details, but uh, I did some with uh, uh, ink on an embossing folder. I did others with white craft ink. Um, this one is this one was my original card. It actually has heat embossing on it. And now on this one, I had a white border on the edge. I decided to do something fun um, where I used my Wink of Stella brush with some ink and I added some color. So you can see it now has some, a little bit of shimmer to it instead of being white. So very fun. Another one with white craft ink. This was another one I did with the embossing folder. I thought those of you who were here last week might enjoy seeing the finished projects instead of just seeing the focal pieces. So um, here's another one that uh, is finally finished. And then I did some versions in greens. Now I know this is not a traditional gr Christmassy green, but I like this green. This is, um, which one is this? Parakeet Party, I think. And I eliminated the white layer on this one um, and added a little bit of ribbon. So you can spice it up or zhuzh it up as my friend Emery likes to say. <laughs> Um, and then this one as well. And these came together so, so fast. So really quick Christmas cards. If you're looking for a Christmas card idea um, that is actually no stamping, but does some fun things with embossing folders. All right. So there's that. Now, the project that we're going to look at today, that we're going to make today, is this one. Now, I'm going to vary some of the segments, some of the pieces of it. So we're going to do it slightly differently. This was actually the Color Fusers Pop project that went live on Monday. This The color scheme is um, uh, Cajun Craze, Pecan Pie, and Wild Wheat. Very earthy uh, tone a set of earth tones. So I uh, love how this card turned out. And I'm going to just show you the project, the products that I'm using for these. Now, um, I'm using this bundle that is not my typical go-to, but it's got some super cute little images in it. And I've played around with it a, a whole lot. Hi, Mary Beth. Yay. So glad to see you here. And it has some coordinating dies as well with all these little cute pieces. I have had a ball with this. Stay tuned for more projects coming um, made with this bundle. So um, super fun. All right. Now I've also used um, some of this all about autumn. Um, what is it called? Oxidized copper paper. There's two different kinds. One with this turquoise color. 
Uh, I'm not sure what it's supposed to be. Maybe Lost Lagoon or Pretty Peacock. I don't know. And then without the color. So it's really pretty, pretty paper. Um, very showy. And I've got just the tiniest little element of that here in behind. Sort of to give it a little bit of dimension. So let's go ahead and get started. And like I said, I'm going to do this in a slightly different way than how I did the original one. Now I have to tell you a story. <laughs> The color scheme, as I mentioned, uh, is uh, Cajun Craze, Wild Wheat, and Pecan Pie. And I didn't realize until, um, like, after the blog hop went live, that this color is not Cajun Craze. Whoops. <laughs> so we're going to make it tonight with the real color combination, Cajun Craze. And it's it's a it's a in the same sort of family, but a very different look. So just to compare that, I'm just going to you, show you a quick look at that color. So there's the difference, right? This one is much more reddish and bright. This is more muted. This is copper clay, one of the in colors. So anyway, we're going to see what this card looks like. And I, I may or may not use this card base. We'll see whether I like it. All right. What next? Okay. So we're going to start with the little um, uh, thermos image in the set. And I'm also going to be using this little itty bitty mountain scene. I love mountains, anything with mountains, even if it's tiny like that. And I have off camera, heat embossed, stamped and heat embossed, those two images on here. I wanted to give myself a little jump start because there's a lot of pieces and parts to this card. So I'm going to actually watercolor this. And um, so I'm going to use the some droplets of ink that are in my uh, ink pads to do that. And so there's my Cajun craze. Now I'm going to make this Cajun craze. Now the um, original card design, this was colored with blends alcohol markers. So we're going to get to see kind of how it looks different doing it one way or the other. And that little tiny image is also colored with blends alcohol marker. So we'll see how it compares. I just think that turned out so pretty and hopefully I can come up with a similarly beautiful um, look with the watercolor. Now, um, uh, okay, so let's just go ahead and get started. Now, when you um, uh, use a watercolor, wherever it's wet is where the ink will go. Where it's not wet, the ink will not go. So this is a very important detail, especially for a project like this, where I'm going to do that little itty bitty mountain image um, in different colors altogether. So I don't want that piece to get uh, wet. So I'm going to just basically color on some water, some clear water, <laughs> all around that little circle, but not on it. Does anybody else have this set? It's such a cute little set. I especially love the itty bitty images in it. And part of why I chose it for this uh, color scheme was because it makes me think of back to school, you know, lunch boxes and all that good stuff. All right, so I'm just gonna pick up a little bit of my ink and I'm actually gonna put a little droplet into the lid because I want to start off with it fairly diluted so I can control my color better. And I'm using the smallest size of my um, water painters. There's three sizes and figured the smallest one would be the easiest to control what I'm doing. Now you can see this color is going on pretty light. It almost looks like a peach or a pinky. It's got a pinky hue. Doesn't really look so much like the cardstock, which is really dark. So there's my first layer. I'm going to now do some up here at the top. Believe it or not, this is actually faster than doing it with blends. I tend to go over my pieces a bunch of times with multiple layers of color when I use blends. All right, so now it's all wet, but it looks kind of orangey. Like it's just a little bit not dark enough, right? So 
Maybe I'll bring this in screen so you guys can see that. So I'm going to start darkening it a little bit and giving it some shadow, some shading. Now this is getting kind of dry. You want it to be like a little bit wet. That helps the colors to blend and mix. So you can see now I've added a little bit of shading in that lower corner. I'm going to bring this up to the camera every once in a while so you guys can see it. And when I want more water, I can always sque squeeze my blending brush, I'm sorry, my water painter to get more color out of it. Okay, now generally speaking, I want this to be all a little bit darker, so let's just go over it. And the wonderful thing about watercolor paper is you can fuss with it a lot. And it's very tolerant. You can also remove color as well. So got some paper towels over here. I'm just going to squeeze this out. And I want up here to have a little bit of a little bit more lightness. So I'm wetting it. And I'm just going to take a paper towel, kind of dab off a little bit there. So I have a spot that's lighter. Okay, and I'm going to keep working on this. Oop. Okay, more shading, more shading. Comment and say hello. How are you doing tonight? I have to say, well, and I, I forgot to introduce myself. <laughs> For anybody that's new and doesn't know me, my name's Melissa Kerman my, uh, with Melissa's Crafting Treehouse. And I've been a Stampin' Up! demonstrator for 20 years. Amazing. Can't even believe it. Been that long and I still love it. Still learn new things all the time. Still meeting wonderful creative people. All right. I'm going to stop maybe right there. You know what? I'm going to do a little bit more shading on my lid. I want some right in this corner here. Comment if you like to do watercoloring. Is, is watercoloring your thing? What do you think of fall colors? Is fall, are fall colors your thing too? So one of the wonderful things when uh, people of course come to my studio is I get to know them a little bit more and uh, there's ways to know people of course uh, online a little bit harder so it means you have to comment and share things i ask you to share things so that i get to know you even though i can't see your faces all right okay so i'm going to stop there with that and just going to squeeze out my brush and let's bring it to the camera so you can see it better and now i'm going to work on this little itty bitty focal piece and I'm going to use a uh, pecan pie for this. And I've got a little bit of ink in the pecan pie lid. And I'm going to use some wild wheat right there. Now, I didn't think I was going to like this color, wild wheat, but I have enjoyed using it so much. It has its place. Sometimes it, it's kind of a chameleon color. Sometimes it looks a little greenish. <laughs> Sometimes it looks a little golden and yellow, but uh, it's an interesting color to play with. So I'm going to start with a little bit of the wild wheat on my moon. And I'm going to use some diluted wild wheat for the sky. So you can squeeze a little water in there. And then I'm going to come into the sky to get some yellow in here. So now it looks yellow. So you can see how different that is. The moon looks a bright golden and the sky looks more like a yellow because it's so much more dilute. Okay. Now I want my horizon to have a little bit of pecan pie. So I'm just going to wet it to dab up just the tiniest little bit. I want to create a bit of a dark shadow on the edge. Now, if this was less wet, I'd have less, I'd have more control over its movement. 
And as you can see, it's kind of moving up into the yellow, even though I just touched it at the edge. It's fine, it'll be good. I really just wanted some darkness down there um, at the where the mountain meets the sky. All right, now what? Um, now I'm gonna work on the mountain. I'm just gonna wet the little mountains. And color them in with the pecan pie. Okay. I need to add some shading to that. And uh, I did my dark down towards the bottom here. Bring it up so you guys can see it better. Tiny, tiny, tiny little piece. I've always had a thing for little things. So I love the images in this set for that reason. <laughs> so cute. Who else thinks they're cute? <laughs> Hi, Cindy. Oh, I see more people commenting. Wonderful. Um, welcome. Glad you made it. Hi, Chan. So glad you're here. Late, late is better than never, for sure. Hi, Barbara. So glad to see you guys here. Thanks for commenting and saying hello. I, um, you know, I wouldn't be doing this, this uh, still, this craft, if it weren't for all the wonderful people that I've met. So I'm very grateful, great for all of, grateful for all of you, and grateful that you're here, spending time with me tonight. All right, so. I just want to show a little bit. I was playing a little bit off camera before um, before I went live to just play with the colors a little bit and see how much depth of color I could get. And I just use this little scrap of watercolor paper. And it's a great way to kind of play with and see how you can, um, how the colors will work when you watercolor. So this is the same color as that, which is the same color as this. So that's this sort of pale peachy color. I don't know if you can see it on camera. It looks a little washed out. And that's even lighter and that's uh, light darker and that's even darker. Um, so you can see you have a lot to play with. This is the um, pecan pie. And I just wanted to see what it would look like on the watercolor paper so that I could have an idea of whether I was going to like it on this. And of course, I decided that I was going to like it. Now, I don't have enough sort of lightness at the top of this. So I'm going to wet it just the tiniest bit. And I'm going to come back in with my little itty bitty paper towel. And... You can see I've just removed some so that makes the mountain at the top look a little bit lighter. Yeah. And it's going to change a little bit as it dries too. I'm going to leave it be for now. All right. So there we go. I'm going to set this aside to dry. I will die cut it later. And in the meantime, I'm going to get started with some of the other things um, that need to be done for this car. All right. Um, North Dakota. Wonderful, Cindy. So glad you're letting us know where you're from. And Texas for Barbara, 79 degrees and nice. Oh, wonderful. The weather's getting much more temperate here. And I do. I love, I love that. All right. So we're going to stamp our sentiment on a little strip of white. And I'm going to use the wild wheat and this little, lovely little sentiment, which I adore. You warm my heart. It's just one of those sentiments you could use for all kinds of things and for all kinds of people. Um, and I'm just going to go ahead and stamp it. Let's see if I can <laughs> get my head in the camera a little bit, <laughs> not on purpose. All right. And then I actually, this is the piece I used when I made my original card and I liked the angle. So I thought, well, I'm just going to use that again and I'm going to use it as a guide for, um, how to trim my, uh, is that going to work? <laughs> How to trim my white piece. I had this all, I had, had the thinking planned out, but then I, you know, I'm getting myself confused. Okay, so I'm just going to use it as a guide. So I'm going to take my white paper, center on the back side. I want it facing uh, up so that it's facing where it's going to be when I'm done with it. And then I'm just going to trim it off right at that same angle. And if I eyeballed it, I'm sure it would be just fine, but I want the angle of my black piece to be the same as the white piece. So it's a little bit close. So I think I'm going to do that again on the other side. Now this time I'm going to actually uh, trim it off first before I stamp it because then I can tell 
how much space I need on the side. So let's do it that way instead. All right. So now, did I do that? Did I do what I thought I think I did? Dang it. <laughs> backwards. Oh no, that way that's exactly what I meant to do. Okay, good. Very good. <laughs> All right. Now I'm going to stamp it again. And I'm going to do it so that I can see how much of the white on the right side I have. I I cut it way too close in the previous method. Okay, so there we go. All right. So now let's trim off the other end. And I'm going to use that as a gauge as well over on this side. I'm a perfectionist if I am not, if I am nothing. <laughs> All right. Okay. So now we got that side. And now I can trim off this side right on top. So there we go. That was a lot, a lot for something very simple. It's okay. I've got to be me, <laughs> right? You've got to be you. <laughs> yes, Stampin' Up! Friends are awesome. I so agree, Jan. There's nobody else in the world that understands the madness that, of, of how much we love this thing that we do, right? Okay. They might try. <laughs> Okay, there we go. So there's my sentiment all set. Very good. Now we're going to move on to a little bit of dry embossing. So let's move some of this out of the way. I'm going to use my little mini Stampin' Cut and Emboss machine for this. And I'm using this Geometric Patterns embossing folder. And wait a minute, that's not the one I'm supposed to be using. Where did the one go that I'm supposed to be using? <laughs> I put it somewhere. Oh no. I might just have to do this one different. I thought I had it here with me. I wanted you to see both of them. So I put this one in my in the bucket, but now I don't know where the other one is. Just looking around, seeing if it's in, 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 in sight. But it's not. So guess what? We're going to mix it up even more because why not? So the one that I used, the one that goes with it is these little triangles, which uh, I really liked. Um, but I also like this one. So we're going to use this one. All right. Just go with the flow. So I'm just going to now visualize a little bit how this is going to look, and what I want on here. I'm going to get a little bit of all of the different shapes that are in this one. This has some nice variety to it, which I do like. Okay, let's get that in there so it's straight. Grab my little mini stamp and cut and emboss machine. Now these are not, um, these embossing folders are not the 3D kind. They're not as thick. So the layering is the plate number one and then the plate number three. And then just right through the little stamp and cut and emboss machine. I love this little machine so convenient for having right on your workspace. Just love it. Okay, so now here's what we got. This fun little texture as compared to the little triangles on the original card. Got to mix things up, right? Okay, now I also have a piece of that oxidized copper paper. Love that also. And I think I will do which way do I want to go? I think I'll do that way. Okay, so I'm going to put some um, adhesive on the back side at the top. And did I decide I wanted? Yes. Okay, because I'm going to attach that oxidized paper. Oxidized copper paper. Always good to work on a silicone craft mat when you're doing your adhesive because you don't have to worry about it sticking, your paper sticking to your work surface. Oh, you like the embossed piece? This one in particular, you like the new one, Cindy? <laughs> I like it too. It's a good little duo of embossing folders. I think they're in the mini. 
Am I remembering this right? Somebody somebody would will be able to tell me out there. I know you will. Okay, so we got this piece taken care of. We got our sentiment taken care of. Um, now we're going to start with a bunch of stamping. We love stamping. Okay, so we got our Memento Black. I call it Memento, but it's really Memento. <laughs> right? The M-E. Somebody pointed that out to me. I spelled it M-O-M-E-N-T. Anyway. Um, little details there. Okay, so we're going to stamp a repeating pattern of the um, the uh, thermos image right there and create this little background. Now I'm going to start with where I want my um, main image to be. So now my white piece here is a bit bigger than um, what I'm going to need in the end. And I did that on purpose so I'd be able to trim off some of the edges and uh, get some a fun look. And uh, it's always, I think it's always a good idea to have a piece that's a little bit larger than you intend to use because you never know how those little scraps are going to come in handy. I like to use them to decorate the insides of my cards. Super quick and easy way to do that. Okay, so I'm just kind of creating my pattern here. Got one at the top. Skip. See what I'm doing here. And then I'm going to repeat. So this the same height as this one and this one. So that's my pattern. And you can see it looks a little bit different from my card, maybe. Well, you can't see it because card's off camera. Uh, only because it's a bigger piece. So we'll be trimming it down to suit our needs. So for those of you who joined in late, um, what you missed was I showed the finished cards of what I made last week in last week's Facebook Live because I showed a bunch of focal pieces, but I didn't put them all together. So I thought it would be fun to show you. I had eight cards all together that I made, and they were super quick Christmas cards, which, um, you know, if you're uh, somebody who makes homemade Christmas cards, uh, it's a wonderful thing to have some quick, quick ideas. So um, there wasn't any stamping. I used embossing folders and it was super quick and easy. So I uh, encourage you to check that out if you haven't already. All right. So, or if you missed the beginning of this live, I do have blog posts with those projects. So um, you can see them on my, on my website as well. So when I do these images, I'm, I'm using this lovely two-step stamp, uh, stamped image, right? So I've got this image right here. I'm stamping it on the inside, and it makes it like fill up or color in, as I like to say, uh, in the easiest possible way. You know, um, so I want, uh, let's see, maybe three on each three of each color, and I might go back in and do more if I like it, but I have to bring in my scrub because I'm using this one image with multiple colors. So I've got my scrub over here up to the right, and I'm just going to go ahead and clean it up. I'm going to leave that open because I may use it again. And now the wild wheat. Excuse my head if I'm getting it in camera. <laughs> Didn't quite get that one all the way over. Oh well. Okay. Now this one. And I just remembered, I realized that I'm going to have to use my blends for the lids, the tops of my thermoses, unless I leave them white. Maybe I'll leave them white. Why not? What's the harm, right? All right, so. Mm, how many do I have left and which do I need to do? Okay, we're gonna do some of the Cajun Craze next. Hi, Melissa, glad to see you joining in. 
All right, so now I'm doing my Cajun craze. Now this is the one that's gonna get covered, so I'm not gonna bother stamping that one. I like doing repeating patterns like this, and um, one of the things I'm gonna show you um, is uh, a design that I did for Maker's Mojo. I'm gonna show you this at the end. And I need another one right there. Um, that this repeating pattern reminded me of. So uh, stay tuned for that at the end. I'm gonna sh I'm gonna show that, which will be fun. Oh wait a minute, that has to be white because that's the lid. So I'm not gonna do that. It won't line up anyway. All right, and I'm not doing this because it's gonna get covered up for any who missed that detail. All right, I think I got them all covered. I am going to actually, do I dare? <laughs> I missed this line right over here on the side. I'm going to try to go over it and see if I can do it okay. I'm just going to make that. Oh, there we go. It just meant that the little rectangles on that edge are bigger. Who would know, right? Now it's filled in and it looks right to me. <laughs> Hi, Shelly. So glad you're here. Comment. Comment and always comment because otherwise I don't know that you're there. You don't want to be anonymous, do you? <laughs> I want to know that you're there so we can talk and chat and uh, and have fun. All right. So um, and of course that I can get to know you better. All right. So thanks to all of you for commenting and, and being here with me to begin with. Okay. So we're closing our ink pads. Don't want to put anything down on them and make a big mess. That will happen sometimes. And uh, now we're going to trim this down, okay? So I'm going to start by trimming the bottom. And uh, let's see. So this piece is actually a full quarter sheet. So four and a quarter by five and a half. What I need in the end is uh, a piece that's um, five by three and three quarters. So I'm really going to be cutting off... Uh, a half of an inch off of this, but I'm going to start with, what am I going to start with? Yeah, I have a half an inch to play with. So I want a quarter of an inch because I'm going to use that. And that one didn't end up being quite nearly as good as I thought it was going to be. Okay. So we're going to trim off another quarter inch. I think this piece might be more of what I want. You'll know what I mean when I in a little bit. <laughs> Let's see. Just the tiniest little bit more. I kind of want to be about three sixteenths of an inch. Nothing like precision, right? All right. And then side to side, I need it to be three and three quarters. So I'm cutting off uh, the same amount, maybe a quarter inch off of each side. Let's try the quarter inch off of this side first. And I may or may not use these scraps. We'll see. But I've got them to play with if I want them. All right. And again, I'm doing this one a little bit different. I'm not going to color in the, the lids of the thermos. Um, and we'll see how that goes. Okay. So it'll be a little bit different than my original card. All right. What next? Um... Ah, so I have my inside piece. Now I trimmed off the bottom first because I wanted to have a piece that I might use on the inside. Now that doesn't look right because there's not enough going on at the bottom to really bother using that in the inside. So that's not happening. But let's see whether I might want to use one of these. It's the sideways. <laughs> sideways. <laughs> I don't know if that's going to work so well. I could theoretically cut it off. No, I don't think I'm going to do that either. Eh, not going to use that either. Okay, so nix those ones. <laughs> and uh, that's okay. I'm not sure how I'm going to decorate the inside. Maybe I'll use another scrap that I have sitting around. But either way, we won't worry about the inside for now. Okay, now I do have this piece, which I'm going to be using on the front. Um, this was the better two pieces. has a little bit more pattern to it. Um, so we'll set that aside for now. Now, um, let's go ahead and die cut my little dry thermos here. Okay, you ready for that? So 
So we've got my stamp and cut and emboss machine again. And now I need my two, th number three, or number two cutting plates and the base. Get that. Those are, that's our layering. Now I do need to use a little bit of washi tape to hold down the thermos of dye. So let's get that in place first. Right. What would we do without washi tape? Okay. <laughs> Get it to pull that baby in. adorable little die cut piece and I use my washi tape more than once don't throw it away after the first one so there we go cute cute okay now let's start attaching some pieces we've got a piece of black and a piece of white so this white piece, I want to work with that first, the, the stamp piece. This is going to go on the bottom. I want to make sure that, that they're exactly the right width. And I have messed that part up. So um, if they're off by a little bit, if I do it at this stage, then I'll be able to trim it off if I need to. And I don't because it's, it's actually just what it needs to be. So that's good. I brought in my silicone craft mat again just to have that extra bit of comfort in knowing the adhesive isn't going to stick in weird places. All right. Now that's sticking up and it's white. That's going to bother me. <laughs> oh, well, we're going to figure this out as we go. Maybe I'll decide to put my sentiments somewhere else. We'll see. All right. So now I popped up my original thermos on my original card and the spacing is a little bit different now. Wouldn't have anticipated that. So it's I guess it could be sort of on the table. In my mind, this was on the table, <laughs> but it's a little bit too low for that. So unless I want to sort of try to hide it. Oh, geez. But then it's on top of the other one. So maybe it just has to be like more in the middle of the table. That's what's going to happen. That's what's going to happen. Okay. Now I've got some dimensionals here to pop it up and you know what maybe I won't use dimensionals this time because it'll make it look more like distant if you will from the table so to speak so I'm going to actually do some glue dots on the back instead I'm going to layer a couple of them up so that I have a little bit more height since the top part is on the white which is lower and got some extra layers of cardstock there so let's do a little bit of that now. It won't come off my thing, so this handy silicone craft mat, I can just turn it over and press it on there and pull it off. Isn't that lovely? I love that part. Okay, now um, I got my adhesive, and that's going to be stuck to this part, and we'll just line it up right over the top. So it's going to look a little bit raised, but not as much as on the original card. Okay, nothing's hanging off the edges really of any note. Oh, there's a little bit there. Okay, let's trim that off. Doing this off camera. Just the tiniest little sliver. Okay, I like my even edges. All right, let's put some adhesive on the back side of this. Okay. Now my black piece is on a release sheet because I put adhesive on it. I wanted to give myself a jump start on a few little pieces. So it's got adhesive on the back side, which is why it's sitting on this white layer here. Okay. OK, 
Okay, now, you know, this was the plan. This, is, this was a complete half, happens, oh, I forgot to do that part. Okay, happenstance kind of thing. On this card, I trimmed this piece off of this one and it ended up with this really lovely um, uniform pattern, right? I got a little bit of my wild wheat, some of the Cajun craze, some of the pecan pie, and it's all the bottoms of the thermoses that happen to be at the bottom of the piece I cut. This one isn't quite as lovely and regular, but I think it's going to do. <laughs> and um, if I had been thinking ahead, I would have probably uh, trimmed it off before I attached this piece, but I didn't think ahead, so that's okay. We're just going to kind of eyeball it and it will be fine, I'm sure. So it's a little bit too long. We're going to trim off just the tiniest little bit more. There's always multiple ways to what they say. Skin a cat, such a strange expression, right? Where did that expression come from? Okay, and then we're just going to attach this to the bottom. I'm going to use glue dots because this piece is really thin. And if I put the seal on it, it would be coming off the edges. And I'm just going to have a little bit of the pecan pie showing at the bottom. Okay, so we got so far. All right. <laughs> okay, we're ready to put this thing together. So now, here's what we got. This would be the Cajun Craze card base. And then this would have been what I had done on this original one if I had been paying closer attention. Uh, this, if, for those of you who joined in late, <laughs> this was my Color Fusers blog hop project. It was supposed to have Cajun Craze for its card base, but I just completely didn't realize what I was doing because <laughs> they're kind of similar colors, uh, just so you can see, uh, you know, kind of similar, right? This one's a lot brighter. So we're going to see what this looks like on this piece of, uh, actually, well, I, I'll put my sentiment on first. And then we'll see what it looks like. So, so now the sentiment, of course, is going to be. Now it's different because my the placement of my thermos is different. Do I put it over the top? No, I think it has to be below. I don't know that I love that placement as much as the other one, but I think it's gonna it's gonna be okay. All right. Oh, Cindy, I'm so glad you've enjoyed the card. Okay, so now let's see um, how it looks on the Cajun Craze. I think it actually looks good. It's pretty bright. Now I took a piece of white just in case I wanted to go straight up white, but that looks kind of boring. And then I also pulled a piece of the pecan pie to see if I liked that better. But, you know, I think I'm going to go with the Cajun Craze. There we go. That... That is my finished card. Now there's some differences just to point them out. Um, of course, I use blends alcohol markers on these and I use blends on the tops, the lids of my uh, thermoses on this one. Um, left them white on this one. I could still color them in if I wanted to. Tell me what you think. Should I color them in or do they look okay white? I colored that one in, so it's a little bit inconsistent, but uh, what else? Um, and then on this, I just used Memento Black and colored it in with blends. Here, I heat embossed and have it right on the thermos. Instead of being a separate piece, this is a separate piece, I have it as part of the image there. So a couple little differences. My little panel down here, my strip down here is a little wider than that one. Uh, you know, and the positioning is a little bit different, but you know, it's always going to be different, right? Just a fun little crafting experience to play around with different ideas. All right. So now for the inside, um, I do have this little strip of watercolor paper that I could put on there. Maybe I would color it a little darker because that is Cajun craze actually. Um, and that's what I did on the inside was I used a scrap of watercolor paper. It's kind of pale, but it's still, it's Cajun craze, even though the cardstock isn't Cajun craze. <laughs> We'll see. I'll decide that later. All right. So I am all done with this project presentation. I do want to show you now a couple of a, a bit of a, a sneak peek into what we do at Maker Joe. Um, the Maker's Mojo Creative Escape event that's coming up, the autumn event, is on October um, uh, 
20th and 21st. It's a day and a half long event. Um, and let's see what else. Um, yeah, let's just show you that little banner there. So um, it's on the 20th, 21st and 22nd. Um, and the Facebook group is already live. So it's uh, definitely a good idea to get into the group as soon as possible because um, we do these play along post prize drawings that start tomorrow. So they last about two days long and you can comment and you get entries into the prize drawing if you um, if you leave a comment. And it's a way that we get to know you as a community and it's just so much fun to, to you know, have people comment and share. Um, and there's always different fun questions that we include. So um, let's just show you. So you can see I did this sort of repeating pattern on here. And like I said, that's what reminded me of this one project I was going through. Now, the project I'm going to show you uh, for Makers Mojo, this was one presentation. We always show multiple project variations. And this one, I think there were maybe eight. This is from January 2021. So I did this sort of uh, patterns. Um, patterns with different images on black and white. A lot of them were black and white, but I did versions that were in color as well. So this was just one of the cards that I showed and then did another pattern with some of the other images, different layout, again, black and white, another one that was kind of similar, and then another one. So this is all one presentation. The idea being to show people different ways to use their stamps using a method and a certain layout. So there's that one is my color version. So you can keep it straight up black and white, or you can um, add some color. Um, here's another one. Again, all one presentation shared at a Makers Mojo event in January of 2021. So this one, there's my straight up black and white one using my repeating patterns. And then, of course, the one that was colored. Um, this one's another one that's similar, a little bit wider element, but same idea, repeating patterns. Uh, this one, it was full ink and stamped off ink. Uh, here I went in and I had some extra layouts. So I did some designer paper on that one. So totally different one there. Uh, here's another kind of standalone one, another black and white, same stamp set. I went kind of crazy with this one. Not all the presentations have these many variations, I promise you. But we do try to show multiple variations so that it gives people an idea of uh, how to recreate a project um, with their own stamps. So this one is fun fold. This actually slides off. Uh, just, I guess, slide that off and show you. So the inside's kind of boring, but uh, <laughs> but it's got this little mechanism where it slides on here. I'm not gonna try to do that while we're on camera. Um, and then I did a colored version. So uh, again, one presentation. So all of the presenters do an incredible job um, of showing lots of different ideas and uh, in one presentation and showing you how to maybe apply the methods that we are showing to your own stamping so you can make your own fun creative projects so um, the registration details are in the description of this video if it's something that you're interested in joining us for um, you can register all the way up until the 19th of october and still get into the five door prize drawings i'm going to bring that onto the screen um, and then the other thing you should know about is that um, there's an amazing starter kit special happening now. And when you join Stampin' Up, when you join my team, um, you get your first Makers Mojo Creative Escape event for free. So you have the opportunity to earn future events. Um, but uh, if, if you're part of my team, you get that first event free. So super fun. And it's, uh, uh, you know, why not get it for free, right? It's $45 normal cost. Um, and now there's a starter kit special going on right now too. So I'm gonna share that on screen too. And I'm gonna bring me over here so you can see my face. <laughs> Hello, I'm back. Um, so uh, yes, so there are two options. So Stampin' Up's 35th anniversary is this year. And so in, in celebration of 35th anniversary, it's all about 35, right? So you can either get 35% off of your starter kit and the starter kit that's normally $99 is $64.35, pretty, pretty darn good. You get $125 in product or option two, you get 35% more in product. You spend $99 and get $168.75 in product in your starter kit. Um, so it's an amazing deal. So just wanted you guys to know that some sort of things coming together, right? If you um, are interested in it, I give you sort of an idea of what our presentations are like. There are 10 presentations, five demonstrators doing those presentations, and it uh, goes over a course of a uh, week and a half, I'm sorry, a day and a half, but we have our play along posts that start tomorrow. So 
sign up, sign up. It's so fun. Who have who participate in that event, chime in and share it with everybody how fun it is. <laughs> um, now I'm just going to catch up on some of your comments. Um, let's see. Oh, Donna, you prefer them color to black and white? Yes, of course. And so in that presentation, that was one of the things I was thinking was, you know, some people might the, like the really clean and simple. Those were really simple designs. I did use a stamparatus for some of them to get my stamp positioning just right. Um, but I knew that some people would really like it colored and that it would kind of bring it to life. But with any project, you can keep it super simple or you can step it up. Adding color, of course, in that case was a way to stamp it up and jazz it up. Um, but you can make it as simple or as complex as you want. So, and so nice black and white is just, you know, fun, right? So, um, let's see. Okay. Comments. Um, I said, Melissa, you're trying to get back into stamping again. Sometimes, yes, we do have those little breaks. Well, one of the things that we talk about, about Maker's Mojo and why we named it that is because our goal is to help people find their mojo, their creative mojo, to get inspired to create, to be inspired to use the things that you have on hand at home, not necessarily what we're using, although we will show you all the new stuff, as much new stuff as we possibly can, because that's part of the fun. People like to see the new stuff. But we want you to use what you have at home, too. We don't expect you to buy and use all the things that we're using. So that's another great benefit of the event. So, so Donna, you like the black and white? Yes, black and white is fun, too. Um, yes. Okay, yes. And Donna is a Maker's Mojo participant. So she says it's well worth it. Thank you, Donna. <laughs> Thanks for chiming in. Um, yes, we try to blow people's minds. We try. <laughs> We try try to do some amazing things just to keep it super fun. And it's a great group of um, demonstrators that present and a great group of participants. We have a lot of the same people come back again and again. So, um, all right. Oh, my goodness, Melissa, you're coming from a mastectomy. That's incredible. Um, so, well, I hope that this cheers you up and because I'm sure that that's a very hard experience. Um, my mom uh, had uh, two mastectomies over 10 years apart, I think. She had three bouts of breast cancer. Um, my mom is 94, um, and she is a real fighter, very health oriented. And uh, um, anyway, uh, so yeah, I just just had to share that a little bit. Um, she she made it through, and uh, so yeah, hard 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 stuff. But um, you're here to talk about it, so that's awesome. <laughs> Congratulations for your strength and perseverance getting through it. So uh, all right, well. Let me just switch things around a little bit. That kind of wraps it up for me for today. Let me see if there's other things I have to remind you. I just realized there might be a few other things I have forgotten to say. Um, I'm going to put the postcode up there again because I only had it up for just a short bit a little while ago. But um, so aside from the starter kit and Maker's Mojo coming up, um, there is a new uh, uh, kit called the Rustic. Christmas countdown kit. It's like an advent calendar style kit, which uh, is super fun, right? So you can make an advent calendar for the holidays. Um, and let's see what else. World Card Making Day is coming up this weekend. If you haven't registered, do it. Um, I am having an event at my house. Super excited. We're going to do like a stamp a stamp Christmas, Christmas cards and tags. And then after that, people are going to, some people are going to stick around and make the projects that Stampin' Up! is providing for World Card Making Day and that portion. Um, so that, that will be fun. So I won't, I haven't designed any of those things. We'll just play and create and make them our own. So that will be uh, super fun and hope you guys are participating too. So anybody who's a customer or a demonstrator, you can participate in this World Card Making Day. There's a link on the demonstrator website and also in the description of this video. So um, yes, I will be going live next Thursday for another Facebook Live. Um, I have a couple of different projects in mind. It's going to be fall or Christmas, <laughs> um, one or the other, uh, but I've got some fun things coming up to share with you uh, next week. So, and of course, make sure to share, tag, follow, and like, and subscribe if you're watching on YouTube, whether you're watching live or the replay. So glad that you're here. Um, and if you're a newsletter subscriber, uh, there is going to be a free PDF tutorial to make this project. I mean, I just shared it with you now, but all the dimensions and all those details are in the free PDF tutorial. That will be in my newsletter next Wednesday. Um, and I am putting them in there for, two, for I should probably put them in it for two weeks or so, so that uh, people who miss the first week will get to see it for the second week. So 
uh, that's coming. And uh, almost every newsletter I have, either one, sometimes two free PDF tutorials. So if you're not a newsletter, newsletter subscriber, consider doing that. Um, all righty. I think that wraps it up. If anybody has any thoughts, comments they want to share, please comment um, and let me know if you have questions. And I hope to see you back next Thursday for more paper crafting fun. And have a wonderful, wonderful evening and weekend. Bye, everybody. Thank you so much. I am grateful for you. <laughs>